Hello guys, I'm Professor Mark Tullio here with Fundamentals of Mechanical Vibration. Today, solving a problem with deals with simplified model of a quarter car suspension by Lagrangian Mechanics. So let's go. Well, so that's a quarter car suspension working here. This part in blue moves up and down. Okay. And uh, we are considering here the set uh, composed by the tire plus wheel assumed as rigid. Okay, and this both these arms here is rigid massless arms. Okay, so and for this reason we have a uh, an actual position here. We are assuming both these points, this 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 joint fixed joints. Okay, and now here. We have the the spring attached to the to the car, and the the star here means equilibrium position. We have the equilibrium position here, here, and over here. The mass m of the rigid body. We are assuming this blue part as a rigid body. For this reason, uh, we have to to present some geometrical parameters. That's the the length of these arms upper, upper L, lower L, and spring L. This spring L locates locate, uh, the, the spring along this arm here. So, as, uh, as we are considering this, blue, this part in blue as a rigid body, all these points move equally. For example, here we this point here move x for this reason this move equally as well this point here all this part moves x and now we need to know the the spring deformation the upper part of the spring is a delta upper that equals 2 to x in this case here and the lower part or the, the spring is the delta L, but we need to to know uh, this this parameter here. But how? Before we go, we we have to to calculate the how to calculate the, the spring deformation. It's simple. It's simple. It's just put the delta u minus delta l as you can see here in, in the uh, highlighted in yellow so please note the the triangle in green here we go we we use this triangle to using the triangle similarity as you can see here why because we have to determine this delta L here, but it's simple. LS by LS over delta L equals to lower L over X. So the delta L is equal uh, LS over L, uh, LS over LL times X. Thus, the the spring deformation can be calculated as you can see here. That's the final expression for the spring deformation here. Remember, we are using the Lagrangian mechanics, so we need to calculate the, the potential energy. But in this case, we have just one type of uh, potential energy, just the elastic potential energy, in this case here. So let's go. Let's write let's write the kinetic energy firstly the kinetic energy is simply 1 over 2 m x dot squared okay for the potential energy it's simply it's simple 1 over 2 times stiffness times spring deformation squared just uh, as I uh, as I said, just only elastic potential energy here. So, if we replace 
the delta in this expression here, we get this configuration. And if we organize the expression, we can put at this form here. So now we need to, to calculate, we need to determine the terms of the Lagrange equation, as you can. Firstly, um, we are calculating the partial derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to the x dot equals mx dot. But we need the other term here is the uh, derivative with respect of the time for this expre expression here. Finally, we, we get the mx double dot. Now, we need to, to do the same for the, the potential energy. We need to calculate the partial derivative of the potential energy with respect x. So, we get this configuration here. So, just to remember that, that uh, here is the, the Lagrange's equation. But let's, uh, let's check uh, some characters here. We have no damping. For this reason, we can eliminate this term here. For this term here, if you analyze the, the expression for the, for the kinetic energy, we have no x here. We have x dot, but x, we have no x here. For this reason, this term here is zero. We can eliminate here. So, we need just of two parts here. This part, is, this, the first term is calculated here, and uh, this term is calculated here. Just, we need to replace of both, uh, both terms in Lagrange's equation. So now, we have the, the equation of motion here. But we've uh, divided all this equation for the equivalent mass uh, by the equivalent mass, we get this final equation of motion. Let's remember, uh, let's remember that it's, it's possible to determine the natural frequency based on this expression here. Let's remember. All this term multiplying the, the displacement is the natural fre frequency squared. For now, that's the expression for the natural frequency. Uh, this term here we can put out of the, the, the root, like this. So, we finally accomplished the mission given for this, this task here, okay? Okay, guys, for today, it's all, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe the, the channel, share this material, and bye. See you on next video.